Okay, so I don't normally show the login process here, but apparently I heard through the grapevine, the grapevine, I mean fa uh, Facebook, that if you log in right now, some or all of your characters will somehow have been reset to Ogok or Cabalus, which would be bad for me because as a gnome cleric, I'm not going to survive either one of those places. So let's find out together. Okay, throwaway characters in Niriak, East Common, South Carolina. Okay, I'm all right. I'm all right. I don't have to worry about dying in Agak, because I would die in Agak. All right. So I am in South Karana. I ran there. Actually, I did use dial for it. I paid for it out of my own pocket. So, oh, you got to love that music. The reason I'm here is because I have a plan. I want to go somewhere new, new for this uh, walkthrough. So let's see here. I was hunting here a little bit, but as you can see, not a ton. All right, so I have shown this part of South Carolina before. Today my plan is to either go to, well actually let me do slash all 25. Uh, hey, there's another 25 in this same zone. Maybe it's that guy. I think it is that guy. Oh no, it's Goldass. Goldoss? Okay. Uh, Lake of Omen, Unrest, Kazakh Thule. Ooh, Kazakh Thule. Oh, I love Kazakh Thule. Okay, but my plan today is to go to either Wrath Mountains or Upper Guck. Now, uh, 25 for Upper Guck is a little bit on the high side. So from the uh, Aviac Village there, I just go... What is it? South. Yeah, of course. Just go south. Head south, and you will end up at the zone line for, what do you think it is? Obviously, it's like Wrath Tier. <laughs> if you've never played this, you don't know that. But So, it's a good thing I've been working on my swimming. In fact, what is my swimming skill? Uh, 106, that's pretty good. That's better than a starting Ixar. All right, so there's a lot of places you could go at 25. Wow, I didn't think I'd be getting that kind of water sound here. Uh, there's a lot of places I would like to go that realistically are just not very populated. And I'm a little bit worried about Upper Guck because my recollection of Upper Guck, in fact, I don't even know which way is the most efficient to go once you get into Lake Wrath. It could be left, it could be right. Damn it, I should have looked this up before. I, I was gonna just consult my own memory. You know what? I could just go to the middle. How about neither left or right? I will keep an eye out for anything that might be swimming with me that I, it's not gonna be friendly toward me. Oh, you gotta get just right. And we can see up in the sky, or I thought we could. Oh, there it is. Is that Lucklin? I think that's Lucklin. Okay, so the problem with Upper Guck is, I recall that Upper Guck is generally pretty well populated from about 17 to 22-ish. And even though there's stuff in that zone that would be perfect... Oh, that's what I'm worried about right there, Aqua Goblin. It's green, though. Even though there's stuff in there that would be perfect for level 25, I feel like a lot of level 25s don't do that zone. <gasps> what is that? What is that? A crocodile. Okay, I think I could take a crocodile, although it is XP giving. Sorry, this, every time I try to talk, I'm in like an area that I'm not super familiar with. I am pretty well familiar with this zone, but um, it's been a while. I mean, hell, I could kill those Aviacs. I'd rather kill some undead though, which is why, oh, there's Lucklin. And if you squint, you can just barely make out Vexthal. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm a little bit worried about um, going to Upper Guck without a group. So what I'll do is, in fact, this is a good idea in general. Just put LFG on and see what group invites I get. Maybe I'll get a group invite to Mistmore. Maybe I'll get a group invite to uh, Upper Guck. That'd be great. Yeah, I feel like people generally don't go deep enough into Upper Guck to the parts where you could get good XP at 25. Or if they are, they're doing the stuff that you would solo, like the Saltwater Crocodile. And... My plan in Wrath Mountains, I will keep a secret until we get there. But let's just say it's undead. 
And I feel pretty good about my chances. Okay, let's make sure there's nothing swinging. Now, those of you who have been around a long time will remember the fabled myth about this zone and the water that there is a monster that swims in the water. And it'll kill you. It'll kill you real quick. And the monster is some sort of... Actually, I don't remember. Was it a shark? Was it just a really high-level goblin? I truly do not recall. What's that? That's just an aqua goblin. Um, I think it was something... Now I can't even remember where I am. What's this way? This is where I came from. Okay, so that whole aviac thing over here. Oh, that's not an aviac. <laughs> Sorry, I am a little bit lost here. Uh, let's see what sense heading has to say. I don't know why this keeps moving. Every time I play this game, I move it there, and then I log back in, and I'm, it's not there. Southeast. That could be right. So the way this zone works is the middle of the zone is a lake with one island in the middle. And then along the outskirts of the zone, think of it as like a, a circle or an oval. The outskirts have all these, I guess you can't call them islands, but they're like inlets where there's like a, each one has a different theme. So let's just say, think of a clock and each number, instead of being a number, it's like a little piece of land where the middle of the clock is water and each number is like a different community. So like one of them will be Aviax. Even though that one in the middle was Aviax, there's, there's other stuff here there's like an aviac inlet and then one of them will be um ogres and one actually that's the one i want and then one of them will be um what are some of the other ones there's some weird ones barbarians and then one of them will be like thieves in fact this is the one i'm looking for you know what there might be more than one island in the middle swimming's going up always a good thing so this one here with the ogres, see how that is like separated? Like whatever's going on up there, bandits, there you go. Bandits are one of them. That wall there separates them so that, you know, you can't just run from there to there. I guess you might be able to run along the wall, but. Um, so there's bandits over there. There's ogres up there. I believe that is more bandits. Okay. Yeah, more bandits. So the bandits and the ogres, I guess they tolerate each other. But you can tell from, speaking of Agak, you can tell from those structures that those are ogre uh, tents, but tents made of rock. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Here's a quick feature that I've never shown on this walkthrough, I don't think. I might have shown it when I did Oasis. For people who have horrible swimming skills, they, oh, damn it. They put these little boats in the game where you can actually... You have the helm, Captain, see? And now I can like, well, actually, how do I do it? <laughs> Wait, how do I, it says you have the helm, Captain. Oh, there we go, okay. So now my forward and backward button on my mouse, or my keypad is making me go, you know, left, right, up, down. Because if your swimming skill is absolutely atrocious, this is actually a quicker way to get around. And if you are worried about drowning or some sort of monster underwater, this will keep you safe from that. I guess if there was a monster that was on the surface, you wouldn't be safe. But you get in there and you right click and it, yeah. And look at that. When I click it, it turns the color of my name. I thought that was just because the water was behind me. But apparently it's tied to whether or not I'm in boat mode. How weird. And then a P99 thing is that they made it so that as you get on and off boats, you, you levitate for a couple seconds just to prevent you from falling in the water, I guess. I don't know. It's it, it wasn't like that on live. So let's see. If these are just regular ogres, they will be KOS. But I think, I think they're not regular ogres. I think they're quest NPCs for shaman armor. And I'm going to do the, um, I'm going to do the cleric armor. Ooh, that one's my level. Well, I am level 25 now. I mean, that's kind of high up there. Are any of you merchants? I don't think I even have any. I, I cleared out my inventory before I came here. Oh, hello. 
Oh, I do have a couple things here. Uh, words of absorption. Part of the Sarn's Grimoire. You know what I'll do? I think this will be my new policy. Well, let me see how I am on food and drink. Uh, iron ration? Do you have iron ration? You do have iron ration. Let me get three of them. And water flask. I could use seven. Now, as I've said before, I'm a grown-ass woman. I can summon my own food and drink, but it's nice to not have to do that. All right, so my new policy is with words and stuff, I'll keep them until I upload the next video. And then if by the time I'm recording the next video, no one has said, hey, I could use those words for my character's uh, research skill, then I'll sell them. So yeah, if you have a character that can use any of these words I'm picking up, let me know. Once again, right now I have Absorption and Sarin's Grimoire, page 26. And I don't remember, and that's the right side of 26. I don't remember what either of those are used for. I'm pretty sure Absorption is for Necros. And uh, I know that Sarin's Grimoire is for Enchanters. Aha! That is what I'm here for. And it's actually pretty high level. That's scary. But I'm right by the zone. This is one of the advantages of this camp. Right by the zone, and I have so. Thanks to the Shaman friend that helped me out. So... I'm not going to show all those little inlets in um, Lake Wrath, but I will say I spent a lot of time in that zone. Weirdly on my warrior soloing ABX, not that middle island, but there's another inlet that you can... Uh, oh, you know what I should have memorized was the freaking fear. Let's see how hard he hits. Pretty sure I can take this guy. Well, it doesn't help that my buff is fading. Right as I start a fight, like clockwork. And let's see what kind of XP I get from this. Because I don't know what kind of Zem this zone has. I should, probably should have looked that up. It's not going to be as good as Upper Guck, tell you that. Because that zone typically has a... It's a dungeon. Dungeons typically have higher Zems. I'll just finish him off here, just because I don't want to lose a ton of health. I'd rather lose mana than health. Some would argue that mana is health. I don't know that I saw it move, but my face is pretty far away from the screen. Speaking of my face being closer and far away from things, I've got my mic closer, because I feel like when I listen back to my videos, it sounds like the mic is pretty far away. <gasps> a Cyclops. It's red, yeah. Doesn't surprise me. Lizard Band Warrior. That's interesting that they're indifferent. Another Cyclops. Wow, this is a Cyclops area. I wonder if the Lizardmen are not KOS to me because I am a gnome. Because I remember that gnomes and Eurydites have weird neutrality in certain places. Spook the dead. And I think instead of gate, I will memorize. So this is dismiss. It's always a good idea to memorize the, the next level down of your nukes. Because, for example, right at the end there, when I used my full power nuke, I didn't need all that power, and I didn't need to use all that mana. I could have used this, and it would have been enough to kill it. And remember that since that's a lower level spell, it's more efficient than my current one, which is not maxed out on efficiency. So as you get higher level, your spells do more damage, but they still cost the same mana. So like level 24, when you first get Expulse Undead, or Dismiss, it's not going to do the most damage that's going to do at probably like around level 30 is when it maxes out. And, oh, I need spirit armor too. You also just don't need to do all the damage that Dismiss is going to do. Like, Dismiss was doing what? 142? And I think that started at 141 or 140 at level 24. So this will probably do like 90-ish. Which would have been plenty. And it costs a lot less. So it costs 60. And this costs 90. So that, that philosophy is true beyond just nukes. It's the same with DOTs. If you're a class that has DOTs. It's the same for an enchanter with Mez. Now I always remember this about my enchanter. Which I still maintain was the most fun class I've played in this game. The enchanter Mez at level 4. The very first Mez that you get. That is useful... I mean, my enchanter, unfortunately, my account got hacked. It's a long story. I could story time with Uncle Frank that at some point. But um, that 
at, by level 56, I was still using the level 4 mez. I wasn't exclusively using the level 4 mez, but it was kind of like this, where I would have multiple mezes up. I would usually have an AE mez, which does mez yourself. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things about that. I would use a higher level mez, and then I would always have the level 4 mez. I might even have another one in between. But yeah, I'm a big proponent of using all that, that lower level stuff. And... Because I'm missing some hit points, and it's only a matter of time because I cast Bravery and Spirit Armor at the same time. I want to say I was in North Corona when I did that. I will cast it again, and it should give me a heal for the amount of hit points that it adds to my total. Let's find out. 401. Yeah, it does. Okay, good. And then Bravery always lasts. The hit point buffs always last longer than the AC buffs. So I'll keep this one up. Okay, so another thing I want to talk about. So I, I'm not committing to this camp being my camp. Let's just do like 24 to 27. See where people are, what people are doing. Dagner, so he's probably going to miss more uh, unrest. South Karana. Oh, I think that was the guy I saw. Oh, I don't remember. I thought I saw a ranger, but whatever. Lake of Omen, Lake of Omen, that surprised me a little bit. Maybe they saw my video and they're like, hey, Lake of Omen, you can level there. East Commons, Crushbone. I want to go back to Crushbone at some point because I want to kill Emperor Crush. I don't really care about, what's that guy's name? Dorn or Divin? I don't care about him. I want to kill Emperor Crush. And I think I still have a key for a slave. Mistmore, obviously, great place. Probably by 27, you're probably in the um, graveyard. East Karana, who knows what they're doing. Probably at 24, you might be... Quad. Can you quad at 24? I don't think they get the snare until 29. Ah, whatever. Spiders, probably. Uh, Paniel, who knows. South Karana. As a druid, there's a lot you can do in South Karana. It's, a, it's an outdoor zone. They have a wolf form. Kazakh Thule. I would love to see how many... I mean, he might be soloing, because I don't see anyone else on this list showing up. Unrest. Fireplace, probably. Gucktop. Interesting. So someone is in Gucktop. Let me actually send that guy a tell. O O W I. Tell O O W I. We'll see what he says. I just asked him if there's opportunities for us to group there at this level. Like, just kind of curious what he's camping. So, here's something I want to talk about. I put up a poll today. Uh, what is today? Saturday, June 25th. I put up a poll, and I'm going to do another poll. I'll let this one marinate a little bit because I'm curious what people say. But the poll is asking which expansion had your least favorite endgame zone? Uh, I put that up a couple, actually not even an hour ago, and I have four votes so far, not surprisingly. So the options are Planes of Power, Plane of Time, Kunark, Vicent's Peak, Velia Sleeper's Tomb, I'll put an asterisk on that, and Luckland and Vexthal. Not surprisingly, Vexthal has two votes, Planes of Power, Plane of Time has one, Kunark, Vicent's Peak has one. I would expect in order... Okay, let me talk about my, my Velia's um, asterisk. I kind of had a hard time figuring out what the end game zone for Velius is because yes uh, Vicious or uh, not Vicious Peak Sleeper's Tomb follows a pattern of oh I need to sew myself what am I doing here I'm crazy gotta keep myself safe here always have an escape plan especially if you don't have gate memorized Sleeper's Tomb follows a pattern like Vexthal like Plane of Time that's another asterisk like uh, Vicent's Peak, where you need to have the key to get in. But is Sleeper's Tomb really the end game zone for Velius? You could argue it's not. You could argue it's Temple of Vicent. You could also make a, in my opinion, very weak argument that it's Kale because of Avatar of War. I would say Avatar of War is the hardest raid boss in that expansion. It's certainly the one that took me the longest to kill. I think it finally died like. A handful of days before for the first time died for the first time a handful of days before luckland came out so uh, people had a tough time figuring that that encounter out and understandably he hits like a truck and he has a lot of hit points i would argue north temple vision is the real end game but <sighs> you can't not say sleeper's tomb and and i also wouldn't say all of temple vision is end game and North Temple of Vision is not technically its own zone. It's part of Temple of Vision. So my issue really is 
you know, you've got East Temple of Eastern, which is the Halls of Test, and you've got West, which is a lot of quests, and some lower level raid mobs, lower compared to North Temple of Eastern. And then you've got North Temple of Eastern, which I would say has harder raid mobs than Sleeper's Tomb. I would even argue it has better loot than Sleeper's Tomb. So then why would I say Sleeper's Tomb is the end game? Well, because you've got the Sleeper, which is a, a, a encounter that was not designed to be uh, winnable by the player. It was kind of a, you know, you wake in the Sleeper, the sleeper um, kills everyone, and then you... This is not going well. What is this thing, Khan? Okay, blue. And then you just kind of, you know... Ugh, I should use my necklace. Y y you just die. And, and people in other zones die too. And Fox has, an <laughs> Fox has a shout. Nagafin has a shout. But... <sighs> There are four warders, and there's the final arbiter, I think it's called. There are four warders in the final arbiter, which are like high end raid encounters. Like, I would say they're along the lines of somewhere between um, West Temple of Vision and North Temple of Vision in terms of difficulty, in terms of loot. And the final arbiter, which is like a giant golem, crystalline golem. But. <sighs> I don't know. I, I'd be curious to see what, what other people think. Like, what would you call the final, like, endgame raid zone of Felius? I don't think anyone would realistically say Kale. I don't think anyone would say Plane of Growth. I don't think anyone would say Plane of Mischief. I really think you have two options. It's either Temple of Vision, and you're pretty exclusively talking about North Wing, and it's Sleeper's Tomb. But Sleeper's Tomb, once you wake the Sleeper, do the four warders respawn? I can't even remember. I don't think they do. I mean, I was not in a guild that was raiding that kind of stuff, so I don't know for sure. But in general, I feel like I saw that those guilds that were doing those type of raid content, they kind of stopped going to Sleeper's Tomb. I mean, there was still all the, what do they call them? The chaos weapons or whatever that proc uh, Avatar, ironically. Feral, I, I can't even remember what they were called. I'll look it up you didn't have the four warders. I can't remember if the four warders were, were replaced by something similar that dropped similar loot and were similarly difficult, but they didn't drop the same loot because I think one of the drops from one of the warders was a gnome mask or maybe a human mask. I can't remember. Maybe the human mask was Vex Lol. I'm getting all this stuff screwed up because it's also similar in my mind. One thing that um, I remember was the sleeper spawn. The sleeper was there, but it was like an untargetable. Maybe it was tar. I don't know. But it was like in a bubble. I I've actually gone and looked at it a lot on my private server. The sleeper was in like a bubble, in the middle of this big, big room, and it was a pain in the ass to get down there. But I think like a lot of this stuff, you, you your guild gets down there once, and then they plant the mage, and then it's just coughing from the zone line or something. Uh, that that kind of stuff ruined a lot of the end game stuff for me. I really didn't like that stuff, but whatever. I, I understood why people do it. It certainly happened in Vexdal a lot. I don't know if it happened in uh, Vision's Peak. It definitely didn't happen in Plane of Time, because you had to progress. I remember doing the Plane of Time progression many times. And of course, I'm talking about Plane of Time B, not A. Anyway, I don't think any of these Cyclopses are going to be anything but red. So, eh, the XP's okay here. So, if, if when you got down to where the four warders were. So it's a giant room. The sleeper, Karafirm, is right in the middle in a bubble. And then you've got this square that goes around. It's like, um, what would I call it? So the room is water. I think it was water, not lava. And above the water was like a square that you could walk on. And each corner of that square, each of the four corners was a different warder. The warders, roleplay-wise, were designed to keep the sleeper asleep. Because if the sleeper wakes up, he's going to destroy the world or something like that. So, you could kill... If you killed all four warders, the sleeper woke up. That was the idea. If you killed three out of the four warders, or two, or even just one, the sleeper would not wake up, and the ones that you killed would respawn eventually. And then once they respawn, you could kill the one that you hadn't killed yet. And that still wouldn't wake the sleeper. Because as long as any of the warders are alive, the sleeper won't wake up. And the four warders were far enough apart that you could be raiding one of them and the others wouldn't join in. So it's it's kind of like North Temple. It's actually a lot like North Temple Vision, except not as big, that particular room. 
But like, you know, when you're raiding Lord Vem, you don't have to worry about Lord Kadoikin. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that right. But you know what I'm talking about, the water one, like uh, joining the raid or Lord Kaizen or whatever the hell, Lady Mirinella. Like, you know, unless you're attacking Vulak. Um, I, I personally, even though I put that poll question up, like I, I thought about saying Sleeper's Tomb slash North Temple of Vishen, but then I'm giving it two zones and those two zones are very different. One requires a key, one doesn't. One is, in my opinion, harder than the other. Okay, so I, I didn't want to overcomplicate it like I am right now. But it does not surprise me at all that anyone said that, that so far the majority of people are saying Vexthal. Uh, it's still just at four votes. It's a little over an hour now that the poll's been up. I'm going to let it marinate for a while. So I would expect people to say Vexthal number one was their least favorite. Followed by, I would say, Sleeper's Tomb, but if it's North Temple Vishen. Well, actually, followed by Vishen's Peak. Followed by Sleeper's Tomb because it's just kind of a lean zone. You basically have two, from what I remember, you have two mob types throughout the entire zone. The Crystalline Golems and the Four Warder Dragons, and that's about it. If there's something else, maybe there's rats or something, I don't really remember. I just don't remember it being that interesting of a zone. I remember a lot of bookshelves and a lot of running through giant hallways that were very dark. To me, North Temple Vision is just an all-around better zone, key or no key. Planes of Power, Plane of Time, it's funny because that's the one that riled up a lot of people. I remember, uh, what were they called? Fires of Heaven had like a, they threatened the developers because the whole Plane of Power thing originally was like this flag system, which is basically a key. You know, if you get this key, you can go to that zone. You gotta go to that zone to get that key to go to the next zone. And so you ended up, by the time you got to Plane of Time, you had all these different flags to get in. And then it was like, oh, you have 72 people in your raid? Sorry, we're only letting in whatever the number was, 24 or 54 or something like that. And so the Fires of Heaven people were like really pissed off because they were, as usual, the first ones to get, or one of the quickest to get, because I know there's like Afterlife and all that stuff, to get to the end game content and they were like this is bs we want our entire guild to participate and they can't so they like they they, they threaten the developers they're like we will all unsubscribe our accounts if you do not change and allow us all to participate at one time um they, they put like a timer up on their website if they were like you have three days to correct this mistake or else we are all unsubscribing and quitting and going to another game and i want to say <laughs> correct me if i'm wrong i want to say the time came and went and the developers hadn't made any change yet and the fires of heaven people like still kept playing i i <laughs> i could be misremembering but i remember like like whatever happened to that countdown thing people were like yeah i don't know i think they just kept playing like i think it was a false threat but I also remember that eventually they did change it to allow either as many people as you wanted or just a higher number. Maybe it, maybe they bumped it up from like 54 to 72. I I had a complicated relationship with the Planes of Power, and, and this is a much larger conversation because, you know, I want to do a video specifically talking about each expansion, really. Um, I, oh, come on. I want to... I should have pulled with this, honestly. Does it last so long? So, I, I've i always felt that Planes of Power was overrated and Lucklin was underrated. Now, don't don't mistake what I'm saying. I'm not saying Planes of Power was a worse expansion than Lucklin or Lucklin was a better expansion than Planes of Power. I appreciated both expansions for what they were. Lucklin had a ton of flaws. 50? Come on. Uh, this this I have, I might have to zone this one. Sorry, I'm trying to talk about this, but like, I'm also getting destroyed here. I think what I'll do is I'll fear it, and then I'll and then it'll resist fear, and then I'll fear it again, and then I'll med. So, planes of power had. This is a long story. Lucklin had so many issues with it but one of the things that raid wise people complained about was the fact that the mobs had a ton of hit points empress Rajia had a million hit points um jesus 
Oh, this isn't good. Yeah, this isn't good. Can I fear? I'm gonna have to zone this. Because I don't think I can kill this thing. I mean, I can cast this over and over, but... Nah, I'm gonna have to zone this. Um... Empress Raji had a million hit points, and you needed a Bane weapon, which lowered your melee damage against him. Aten Hara had two million hit points. Um, oh, didn't mean to cast that. Oh, <laughs> almost did it twice. The encounters were just really long in Luckland. And I recall Emperor Sragia hit for like less than, less than Avatar War. So it was really just this long drawn out encounter. And then you had Planes of Power, which I felt like they went the opposite direction. Like I specifically remember the Rallo second encounter. It, it was so fast, it but he hit really hard. So he had less hit points than the Luckland mobs. I mean, he probably had like 500,000 or something. And I'm talking uh, Plane of Tactics, um, Relosec, not, not Plane of Time B. But like he hit a lot harder, but at the same time, he had a lot less hit points. And the encounter was so fast. And I felt like there needed to be a balance somewhere in between. Granted, once you got to the elemental planes, it was a lot more balanced out. Like, Fen and Roe hit really hard, and he had a ton of hit points. Perfect. Just, just what we want. And he had an AE. I just didn't like that about Planes of Power. It just felt like everything was so fast. Like, to me, part of the intrigue, part of what I honest, I want, I'm trying not to say what I liked because it was a pain in the ass encounter, but part of what I liked about the Emperor Srajia encounter was that it wasn't just, okay, he's got a million hit points, and you have to figure out how to get rid of all a million of his hit points. It was that... Hey, this is a grind, and we're testing your your durability. We're testing your, um, what would I call it? Stamina. Like, not just the yellow bar stamina. <laughs> but, like, you have to do this complicated event where these six mobs in the room have to stay up, and they have to be off-tanked, because as soon as you kill them, they instantly respawn, so you have to off-tank them the whole fight. So we're taking away like two groups, maybe one group if you're really, really good. I, 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 It has to be more than one. But there was a certain number of mobs in the zone that would respawn immediately. And I meant in the room, not in the zone, the Empress Raja room. While you were juggling the Empress Raja encounter. And it was like this juggling act that you had to do. And you had to keep that up for, I want to say every Empress Raja fight encounter was like an hour long. And you had to kind of like, you had to keep a, a complete heel wheel going for an hour. You had to switch out main tanks whenever they would. I mean, I, from what I recall, I, I do think they changed the Empress Raji encounter. I know for sure, because that's another one Fires I haven't complained about that it was too hard. Um, he death touched a lot originally, and they, they reduced how much he death touched. But I think he did death touch still. And so you would have to switch out the main tank and blah, blah. You got to keep all this crap up for an hour because he has so many hit points. But to me, that was the brilliance of the encounter. Now, there's a very strong counterpoint to be made that like, hey, they, they just purposely made this encounter a pain in the ass because Vexthal wasn't ready when, when the expansion launched. And Vexthal was the end game zone. So they were like purposely trying to stall so they could launch the expansion in December of 2001. But the actual endgame content wouldn't be ready until like January or February, or maybe even longer than that. Um, I I certainly see that argument. I will say that I was in a guild that was always an expansion behind. We were a raid guild, but we were always an expansion behind. When Luckland was the latest and greatest, we were raiding Temple of Vision. When Planes of Power was out, yes, I, and we were doing like mid-level Luckland stuff when it was the latest. Like, you know, we were doing the the Giant Burrow or whatever the hell it was called in the deep we were doing some of the stuff in temple Srajia, not emperor not cursed i loved that that's another encounter i really loved i i actually really like temple Srajia, um or sasra temple we like you know when when planes of power was the latest and greatest my guild was doing like maybe at best soul row and Sarin and bastion of thunder raid bosses but we weren't doing the elemental planes we weren't doing plane of time and we were also doing like Temple Sragia and trying to get into Vexthal and all that stuff. So like, I understand a lot of these encounters were broken 
right off the bat and that for the people that were truly like raiding hardcore they had to deal with a much buggier version of these encounters than i did or maybe just an incomplete or not as well fleshed out encounter so like if if your memory of you know if you were in fires of heaven and your memory of emperor Straji encounter was that it was complete trash and it took them months to fix it i totally get that i didn't experience that i i didn't experience emperor Straji until plants of power was like three or four months old so i certainly don't have the same experience as you but i still remember enjoying the encounter needing a key to get to him and then a key to get into vexthal that included something from him like that that yes i i would totally redo the vexthal key and this is a larger point that i have about vexthal that people hate it if you take away the key aspect of vexthal do people hate it as much take away all those bs lucid shards or whatever that you need to find around luckland do people still hate what if the key for vexthal was just Okay, kill Emperor Strazia, kill uh, Lord Inquisitor Saru, kill the Thought Horror Over Fiend, and kill, um, what was that weird encounter in Akiva Ruins? It was like Shave and Nitrous, I think. Those four things. Emp, Inquisitor, Thought Horror Over Fiend, Shave, Shave and Nitrous. Shave and Nitrous was another really interesting encounter, I thought. Like, I thought they, they came up with some really unique encounters in Luckland. Vis Vizdra the Cursed I thought was a really interesting because he had an eight well first of all there was like this whole process to get him spawned kind of like a ring of Vulak or whatever I know Vulak originally was not was a standalone mob with no ring encounter associated with it um, I thought the Vizdra the Cursed let's give this another shot uh, encounter was really interesting I thought the Shave and Nitrous encounter was really interesting so Cursed had an AE charm which you had never seen before there might have been one dragon that did something like that, but it, it was a lot tougher. Um, Shave and Nitrous was tough because every time someone in your raid died, uh, an ad would spawn in the room, and Shave and Nitrous death touched. Not like over and over and over, but he it, it was on a timer. It was like once a minute or something like that. And he had a lot of hit points, obviously. Everything in Luckland had a lot of hit points. The Burrower Beast, whatever it was called in, in Luckland. Oh, and also my idea for the um, Vexthal encounter which is not super fleshed out by the way it's just something i've been spitballing um was you know you can substitute any of those for the burrower beast so like if, if you really don't want to do that burst raji encounter really two resists in a row come on two complete resists that's some bull like what is this thing level 24 and a half <laughs> i don't know that i'm gonna be able to kill this thing you know, if you really couldn't stand the Lord Inquisitor Saru encounter, which I never did that one, so I have no idea how easy or hard it was. By the way, that guy never responded to me on my tell about Upper Guck. Not that he had to, I'm just... Um, you could sub it out for the Burrower, or maybe you could sub out Shay for... Although, I love the Shay encounter. Uh, you get my point. Like, sub out the ones that are a pain in the ass. Let's say that were the Vexthal key, instead of all the bullshit that it was. Would that zone have been more popular? Because I really feel like a lot of the angst people have towards Vexthal is just the process of getting the key was such a pain in the ass, and they hated that. Oh, no, 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 no. What is that sound? Do you hear that? Every once in a while, my sounds get messed up if, like, two things happen at once. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, good. It's gone. Now the question is, can I melee this thing to death? Given that it still has 22% of its life. No, I cannot. The answer is no. I'm already at 65. <sighs> and it resisted that? Really? This is crazy. I'm wasting time here. Maybe I'm not ready for this. I mean, it, they're all blue, but they're all like high blue. <laughs> this is crazy. I can't believe this. Maybe if I run away back here. Fear of life put into them. <sighs> I don't think I'm going to be able to med enough to... Like, <sighs> really? Ugh, come on. 
the only way I can kill this one freaking skeleton is if I get lucky and don't get any resists early on. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a med break here and give this another shot. Um, I'll come back. What? Who was that guy? Just saw a troll. Oh, look at that! Fires of heaven. They're back. <laughs> Fuhrer in the gang. Go and vote on my poll on my channel. If you don't know how to get to the poll, click on the the channel. Like if if you're watching this either on mobile or um, computer or TV or whatever, go to my channel. And then there's a tab at the top that says community. Click on that and it'll be the top poll there. I'm curious to see what people say. Oh, I'm up to six votes real quick. Lucklin, Vexthal, and Kunark Vision's Peak are now tied. Ha ha. So that, that supports my point that people didn't really like Vision's Peak that much either. But think about what I said about Vexthal. If the key weren't such a pain in the ass, would you have hated the zone so much? If you hated the zone in the first place. I think a lot of people will still say yes, but not as much. Because that zone was a crazy grind with trash that spawns more trash that all has like a million hit points. It was crazy. But I actually really like Vexthal. Um, I'm not ashamed to admit it. Okay, I'll be back. All right, I should be right at about the end of the level here. Uh, you can see I'm pretty close. Should be one kill away. This has been an interesting camp. I will say I nearly died a couple of times. Uh, the skeletons always said it appears to be quite formidable, which I, th I think is actually, I think looks kind of dangerous is the one where it's one level below you. The problem I had was they, they would resist my nukes sometimes. Like that, see? <laughs> Perfect example. Great timing. So, I don't know if I would recommend this camp at 25. It got really frustrating at times. I took a couple notes here. Let me just get myself into a decent position. I hope this stings me. Okay. So, uh, let me just write this down real quick. 603, 48. Okay. So, one thing is, I looked up the Zem for this zone. It's exactly 100, meaning there's no penalty, there's no bonus. I don't know what it previously was. It might have been higher, it might have been lower, but I like it that way. I, I would. I don't really like. Oh, come on. I don't really like when there's a penalty. Um, I totally understand the concept of bonus. A penalty, I guess I could I could understand it if a zone is really overcrowded. Now, I have been casting. Oh, I, I'll talk about that in a minute. Let me stick to um, my notes here. When I say notes. I'm talking, I take physical, you can hear that paper crinkling. I take physical notes. I'm serious about this stuff. With a pen and paper. See, I'm going to need the med now before I can nuke again, because it costs me about 10%. Okay, second thing. The plat is good. I have gained... Uh, let me just scroll back up to the last time I killed one. What did I get for that? I got 12 gold. Okay, so that's a little bit over a plat. Since I've been here, I've gotten... What is that? About 60 plat? It's been really good. I don't know why I'm running. I need to be sitting and medding. Damn it. The problem is these things hit so hard. And now I'm getting that weird sound again. Okay. Sit and med. Uh, yeah, it's the, like I've gotten over, I, I would say about two and a half plat at most per kill, which is amazing. And... I recommend it for that. It's not like hill giant money good, but it's pretty good. Now, here's a weird thing that I noticed. The skeletons and the cyclopses will fight each other. I had no idea that was a thing. When I first saw it, I thought, someone charm killing? But no, apparently they just fight each other. And it sucks for people like me that are camping the skeletons because they don't stand a chance. Are you kidding me? They don't stand a chance against the cyclopses, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of rough. Because then you got to sit and wait. And that brings me to my next point. I don't know how many of these things spawn, but I, I had kept seeing just the one. I never saw more than one at a time. I'm thinking that some of these random bears and lizards and things can respawn as skeletons. Because I know I've seen more than one at a time up in the past. But this time, I did not see more than one at a time at any given time. And I kept having to wait for the same one to respawn. The good news is, the spawn time seemed pretty quick. It would, it would coincide with me getting full mana. Um, 
Ugh. Ugh, this sucks. You see how hard they can hit me. They can hit me for 50, 32, 50. Now, you might have seen me there while I was casting. I was casting the older spell. Uh, expulse versus dismiss. Another benefit is it casts faster. So see this says 2.8 versus 3.3. So that's a uh, half a second difference. That adds up when you're in the midst of, you know, the faster you can get a thing off, you might die if you don't get it off in time. See, like this is, this is not good. This is not good. Oh no, 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 no. What if I died right now? That would be so ironic. I should probably just melee. Th oh my God. <sighs> All right, level 26. So that's another benefit is uh, the older spell casts faster. And if you do fizzle, which happened to me quite a bit, or resist for that matter, it eats up less of your mana. Because a fizzle is a certain percentage of the overall spell cost. Well, if the spell costs less mana, it's less. And in this case, what was it? Oh, come on. 60 mana versus 90. So let's just say it's 10%, that's six versus nine. Okay, that's not huge, but I think it's more than 10%. I think it's 15%. Here's another thing that I got in case anyone needs it. I got a Maroon of Zegany. I think that's a wizard thing. Um, okay, that's all my notes. Last thing I wanna do, it's been another day and I know that there's been some more votes on my poll. So let me just real quick. All right, so I'm up to 22 votes, so a whole lot more. And Vexthal has taken the lead for a little while there. Kunar Vishen's Peak was in the lead, which really surprised me. And Sleeper's Tomb is last place. That that surprises me. Um, I, I kind of expected Vexthal to be the most disliked. Vishen's Peak, it, I'm glad it's at least second. To me, I think that's the worst of them. And, well, I guess, I don't know. I'm torn between that and Sleeper's Tomb. I like both Plane of Time and Vexthal. And you can still vote on it. I will, I'll probably take one more screen grab of it before I upload this. So there might be even more than 22 votes, but yeah. So that's been level 25 and I am now up to 622. What did I say? 603, okay, so about another 19. Yeah, it always seems to be 19. And it will be a little bit more if I recast Bravery, which, what do I have up Let me redo, redo Bravery. Let's see what that gets me to. I would probably wait to come to this camp till you're 26, because I think by that point you'll get less resists, you'll get more uh, efficiency out of your nukes. 620, okay, it's only one better. Well, every little point counts. All right, so I didn't even talk about one of the things I wanted to talk about. I will do that next time. Thank you for watching. I know I rambled a lot about those endgame zones. I'm curious to see what everyone thinks about my rant and how much you agreed or disagreed with those endgame. And go ahead and vote.